660, man. Biggest pull I've pulled, uh, maybe ever conventional, actually. I was thinking about it, and this might be a PR in itself. So, we might be a week early. Energy's good in the building, everyone's just getting warmed up. Uh, drink a little too much caffeine, my stomach hurts. So we're gonna chill out on that rock star and uh, start warming up, let's get after it. workout do you take enough to where I could feel something how many scoops is that two and a half three two and a half plus three a scoops plus a bang you see him on TikTok. follow him on TikTok. he got the bang he got the pre-workout inside the bang he's shaking the bang it's called the yak, it's called the yak. Call a yak. shout out Russ Swole. digging in the memory banks and a little bit of my videos, and yeah, for some reason I thought I pulled maybe 665, 675 conventional, but I think I technically haven't. I think I probably only pulled like 650, and in my head I had like the speed for 665, 675. I think my biggest pull competing with conventional is 633 in comp. So yeah, today might be a PR, which is cool. Kind of going through the same like emotional stuff of like competing, kind of like documenting it for y'all, having a coach. Like taking it serious, kind of like reminds me why I don't compete. Because um, like I put in all this work, I haven't missed reps, I haven't missed sets, I haven't missed training, I haven't missed a 10 p.m. bedtime, I haven't missed a meal, calories been unlocked. And so whatever happens today or next week if we go heavier, it's like, duh, I should hit that. And then if I miss it, I'm like, fuck, man, I fucked up. And so for me, I don't like find fulfillment in all that. And that's not to knock the sport. Obviously, if you guys have been around or if you're new, my name is Mike, and I've been part of powerlifting for 12 years. I've been uh, coaching it, seminars, free information, uh, refing. I've been a judge in the past. I've spotted and loaded meets. I've monetarily uh, helped the sport. So I'm about the sport because of the community and the people in it. It's just not for me to step on the platform. It's just not my position within the sport. So don't let my words you know, negate your want, motivation, or love of the sport. That's not what I meant to do. All it's meant to do is to share my perspective on it and why I don't compete, which is a very common question. So I'm getting a little bit of that, like baby self-doubt on the lift, which is just normal, I think, when you lift weights. You know, you're going for something you've never done before. And then I talk myself out of that, turn my swag back on like Soldier Boy. But that's kind of where the head's at. So we're actually feeling good in the warm-ups. Uh, I'm probably going to smash 660, but it's been a long journey to get here for sure. It looks like it's only been six weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks with y'all, but it's been since my first conventional deadlift at California Family Fitness in 2010. I pulled 315. Have a question. What is your New Year's resolution? I don't have any. Actually, if there were one, if it was one resolution, is to move out. That's it. Period. Um, I think I'm already on my way to doing that. So we'll see. But um, I think money is now somewhat stable or getting to a place where I need it to be. Um, so if I could find a roommate. <clears throat> Make sure you get my angles right. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. What's your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution this year, I want to hit some bigger weight. I'm trying to break through to 500 on squat, and I think I'm trying to hit 600 on deadlifts too, and like 365 on bench. I got a meet coming up end of February, or beginning of February. Sorry, I'm fucking stupid with the game day boys. Shout out Nico. Hey, in the comments, answer this question, bro. What is y'all pastime outside of weightlifting? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, taking t uh, heavy top singles is something that's been um, gaining traction and popularity in powerlifting. The Bulgarians made it popular. Um, they'd have, you know, kind of daily maxes. And weightlifting is obviously a different sport, but in the clean and jerk, even the squat, 
in the snatch, they would go heavy every single day and work up to basically a max, as heavy as you can go without lifting, or missing, excuse me. And so powerlifting, Westside Barbells, one of the first uh, to take that concept and try to transfer it to powerlifting, where they would do that, but they would only do it once a, uh, once a week. Because obviously the systemic fatigue of a maximal deadlift squat or bench is going to be more than a, uh, an Olympic lift, purely because of the range of motion you're doing, the technicality of it, and it's the lifts that you can lift the most amount of weight with. Plus, there's an eccentric to most of them. Obviously, deadlifts, you know, it's like half an eccentric, but there's still something versus a clean or a snatch that's just concentric. A lot of guys, shout out Joey Flex, Johnny Candido. There's a lot of OG coaches in powerlifting that started to implement that um, often, if not year-round, in powerlifting, and a lot of people have had success with it. But the fucking truth is, you don't need it. Um, a lot of the work is built from the volume and the drop sets, right? The threes, the fours, the fives, the doubles. Um, there is something to working up to a top set semi-regularly that allows you to build the skill, which is a portion of how you get stronger. So in that instance, yes, it's the most specific we can do to our sport and powerlifting. That, to say that they're necessary is a big stretch for me. To say that they're even um, the best way is a stretch for me. But to say that it is a possible good way or a good tool to build strength in powerlifting, um, I'm 100% on board with. now for y'all maybe y'all can relate to me now more than ever where my start to powerlifting I literally was training by myself literally by myself strongest dude in a whatever commercial gym like maybe some of you go to but then my first real introduction to the sport I was lifting everyone in the room squatted over 800 pounds everyone in the room benched 500 everyone in the room deadlifted over 600 pounds and majority of them in the seven 800 pound range so when I joined that gym I squatted a five bench 315 and pulled 540. I don't want to say the joy was stripped from me, but like, cause that's too deep, but like I just know what's capable. And so for y'all, it might feel similar where y'all probably follow Russ, you follow Jamal, you see what John Hack's doing, Atwood, all these amazing athletes and you're like, damn, that's cool, I just hit a 500 pound deadlift, but oh fuck. I hope you don't feel the same as me, uh, cause I think you'd be a little bit more driven if you don't. And it's just kind of how my head works. Like I want to be good, I want to be the best. And as an athlete, that's not my spot as a lifter. Basketball, I was pretty good. I was a pretty good coach, but I was a really good player. Powerlifting, I just find my own route somewhere else. So that all being said, 660 feels good because not a lot of things feel good as I'm getting older here. And it's a joke in the gym here, but I've done this for 15 years. Some of y'all probably ain't even 15 years old. Uh, so to get a groove and know that I can still push myself despite having the hardest workload, the highest stress, the most responsibilities, feels pretty good. Um, to be a full-time athlete in anything, you know, you got to lower your responsibility, right? Like, yeah, LeBron and all them have kids, but they have the money that they just lower stress and responsibility as much as they can to focus on their craft. I don't have that luxury. And now I have many other luxuries. I'm blessed in many, many ways, but I still have to focus on other things first, not my lifting. We talk about another video, like visualization, so key to success, in my opinion, to walk through yourself mentally every step that you want to do to succeed. So when you come into that in this reality, it's already accomplished in your brain. And so lifting's the easiest form of that, but I have to visualize everything else in my life. And so I don't have the mental fortitude, capacity, or time to do that. Um, all that being said, pretty good pull, I think. Speed was good. My back felt like it gave out. I don't know if we got an angle of that. Uh, not in a bad way, just kind of lost some tension in my low back. But overall, the speed was pretty solid, I'd say. I got a little fired up just because it's uh, PR, and I talk about that a lot. I try to lift pretty zen, but you know, once a year I might hit some salts. So we hit the salts, turn on a little uh, old Kanye and smashed out. So we got some down sets. We'll see what we're gonna do next week. I gotta talk to coach. I got a question. Give me your New Year's resolution. It was to be extremely handsome and confident, but 
been doing that for 29 years. The real one is I want to get up to like 245, 250. I'm currently sitting at like 221, 222, 225 with shoes on. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just trying to gain, gain weight, get some size, you know. I'm a skinny little bitch. Secret is that like I, I, I lack a lot of confidence. So I have to say I have a lot of confidence to like, you know, to just lie to everyone and, you know. But trust me, the conversation between myself and I is happening daily on a second by second basis. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to gain some weight, gain some size, some good size. Size that I know is sustainable. You gain 30 pounds in like a couple months, you're not going to keep it. So over a year, it's a little less than a pound a week. It's very doable. It's less than a pound a week. It's very doable, very doable. next yo back's feeling pretty good considering that's big pulls one reason i kind of stopped powerlifting is i couldn't pay attention and keep up with the demands of the volume and frequency but um shout out to coach joe for helping me along the way hit this pr and keep me healthy and feeling good so i'm gonna go eat i'm gonna go chill um we may hit another pr next week we may call it we may have a couple more weeks before another pr but the cuts are coming so i'm kind of excited for a switch up just mentally it's actually less taxing for me to diet because it's more routine based um, and it's like less pressure in the gym i just have to work hard i don't have to worry about hitting numbers and all this stuff so in a sense i feel a little bit of relief coming up to a nice uh, cut we're going to shred out for 30 days if you want to get involved join the discord i think we're going to run a challenge and we're going to see who can he, who can cut the most uh, body fat and stay healthy over 30 days along with me in this uh, YouTube thing um, and the winner will probably win some gear from good company 3sb.co so join the discord uh, I think the link's in the bio if not I'll make sure we'll click it up here and uh, that's it man I appreciate you guys following the journey share this thing out new PRs on the way we're always pushing hopefully more lifetime vlogs but lifestyle vlogs on the way 3sb.co Salam Mike Third Street Barbell I'm out of here